The major opposition party, the PDP, speaks again on federal government's handling of coronavirus pandemic in Nigeria. And once again, they don't have nice things to say. And some good news after weeks of worry. Six of the patients that tested positive for coronavirus in Lagos have now recovered. This is Plus Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. A very warm welcome to you. Now, the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, has expressed worry over the possible collapse of governance command structure of the federal government since the isolation of Abba Kiari, the chief of staff to President Muhammad Buhari. The party also stated that it was disturbed over the silence of the president since his chief of staff and some other government officials tested positive uh, for the virus. The opposition party also reacted to the banning of some media houses from the coverage of activities at the presidential villa, saying it is unjustified. Joining us to have a conversation on this and other development is medical practitioner uh, Uche Okorocha. Thank you very much for joining us. Glad to be here. Uh, we'll have joining us via telephone in a bit uh, the National Coordinator of Human Rights Writers Association. Uh, he's been quoted in the media as also condemning uh, the move to ban certain media houses uh, from covering the presidential of Vila. But let's start with uh, the doctor. PDP is expressing apprehension. This is not the first time they're doing that since this pandemic broke out. But let's take it from the angle of the governance structure uh, having um, failing, rather, uh, because of um, Abe Kiari, who they say um, coordinates most of the ministers and is, is very powerful yeah. in President Buhari's uh, cabinet. Mm -hmm. um, would you really agree that the, the governance is failing? Um, so when you say PDP expresses, yes. first thing it tells me is that something is being politicized because PDP is the major opposition party. That's the first thing it tells me, and this is not the time for politics. This is the time to bind together, uh, pull our resources together, and then together we get past this as a people. So first thing is, I do not agree that this is the time to speak as a political party. Okay, let's also take a look at what they mentioned again, because it's also good to look at some of these issues, let it not be like these comments are being made and nobody's paying attention. The, the, the party also talked about public anxiety, that there is heightened public anxiety over President Buhari's non, um, um, was it now? Um, anxiety over the control of governance machinery um, as Buhari has remained silent since Kerry, um, who supervises the ministers, like I said, um, has, um, has been quarantined. Do you agree there is heightened anxiety over governance or there is heightened anxiety over this un unprecedented health pandemic across the globe? So there is heightened anxiety across the globe, okay? And we all know why. Um, people are sick, people are dying, nobody understands uh, everything about this virus. Uh, there are major disruptions of life, businesses, and movement, everything. So people are anxious, people don't know what's gonna happen next, okay? But about Nigeria and disruption of governance. Now, it's understandable if people you know, are concerned that they have not been addressed at this distance by their commander in chief. That is totally understandable. Uh, I would like to hear from him as well. But um, point is, we've not heard from him. But what we want to hear from him, we want to hear encouragement. Okay, we want to hear reassurance, we want to hear that the government is on top of things. I'm a professional. I haven't heard from him, but should I allow that to distract me from what next I need to do in the circumstance? Absolutely not. I have all the information that I need from the right sources, from credible sources, from the NCDC, from the governors of the different states. No, but, but I, I did right? mention, even before we came on the show, when we had the uh, conversation that, right. you know, there is this thing about everybody's glued to the television sets, to their radio, to the internet, mm. and they see 
What's happening in other climes? Presidents addressing their people, sometimes twice, three times a day, letting them know what is being done, as well as other cabinet members coming to speak to the people. So in the face of all of this, pumped at you on a daily basis, and in your own country, that's supposed to be the giant of Africa, your president is nowhere to be found. Isn't he? Suppose you are enlightened. Uh, a lot of Nigerians might not share that uh, optimism that, okay, everything is fine because other people are in charge. They want to see their president. Isn't it disheartening that he is missing in action at this very crucial time? Right. Um, I hear you. I totally understand you and everybody who feels the way you have expressed. Uh, so, again, it's possible for the president and like any other human being to not be disposed at this time. Uh, question is, um, what are the response efforts of the government at the federal level, at the state level? What are the response efforts? And how would the president's physical appearance on TV influence the response efforts? Okay, um, like I said, I understand. But we have to move forward. We have to focus on what we need to do at this time and then we can talk about this afterwards. Okay, we'll come to other developments, but let's see if we have uh, Emmanuel uh, Omubiko, the National Coordinator, Human Rights uh, Writers Association. Okay, as soon as uh, he joins us, we will uh, bring him into the conversation. Uh, still with you, Doctor. Uh, there are calls um, in that press release asking corporate bodies, international organizations, research and medical institutions, as well as public spirited individuals uh, to rally with other members of the international communities for solutions. I'm taking practically the way it was written to check the spread of COVID-19 uh, in Nigeria. What do you make of the general response from non-governmental organization on the word guys, whether corporate or individuals, since this pandemic occurred in comparison to what we see in other parts of the world? So no government anywhere in the world is able to cope with this all by itself. Okay, um, we're all in this together. Uh, and then I will join my voice to call upon the private sector to um, arise, get together, form coalitions, and support the efforts of the government, uh, both at the federal and at the state levels. That's the right thing to do. Uh, even uh, with big governments like the United States and all their resources, you see that the private sector, if you've been following the news, the private sector is supporting the efforts of the government. So that's the right thing to do, but uh, I do believe that there is a groundswell of um, coalitions being formed. Um, I do expect, I'm quite optimistic, that in the coming days and weeks, we will see visible um, contributions from the private sector. Okay, um, I'm told we have uh, instead a legal practitioner, Raymond Nkanebe, on the telephone. Thank you very much for joining us. Do we have yeah. him? Okay, thank you very much, Raymond, for joining us uh, via telephone. Yes, good evening, Felicity. Good evening to you. All right, we're, we're talking about the concerns raised by the opposition PDP, and um, we'd like to take your perspective on that. They are saying that there seemed to be um, a collapse, an alleged collapse in Buhari's um, governance structure since the... Chief of Staff, that's Abakari, uh, was quarantined. Uh, what's your take on all of that? Okay, thank you. Uh, for me, what is happening now has only confirmed the suspicions of um, many Nigerians that uh, the Chief of Staff to the President, Abakari, is the de facto president why Mr. Muhammad Buhari is at best a, a president at law. Uh, um, that's I mean, why... no, sorry, sorry, sorry to interject. I mean, on what basis are you made, making that statement? We have a president and we have a chief of staff. So why would you say that he's president? Uh, you know, when you have a de facto, a de facto president, it's somebody who in the real sense calls the shot and not what... Um, the impression created out there 
in the public. You understand? And that is how and you can, you can find a justification for that in the seeming collapse of, this, of, of the governor's structure at Abuja since he was confirmed to be positive. Remember, one of the first acts of, this, of Mr. Muhammad Buhari when he was sworn in for a second term was to direct all ministry departments and agency ministers to report to Abakiri and not directly to him. Ordinarily, such official functions of state should be routed through the secretary to the government of the federation. You understand? But Mr. Buhari said that all of this should, be, should go through his chief of staff. That gives you a sense of the domineering effect he has in the administration. And even the wife of the president has severally made suggestions in this wise. So what is happening now, when you connect all of these dots, gives you a picture of a presidency that is run by a cabal, headed by Mr. Abakiri, the president chief of staff. Okay, uh, so uh, do you agree that there is a collapse because he is no longer um, actively? He, he, he is not dead. He's just quarantined. We know that the vice president is working from home in self-isolation using teleconference uh, and all of that. So in the real sense, would you say because one man stepped aside for health reasons that the entire well, government structure is at risk? I must agree with you, Felicity, that it might be too sweeping to reach such a conclusion. You understand? But, you know, because so far this, the, the cabinet has been built around this man, once he's missing in action, it tends to disrupt the flow of government until at least an ad hoc, an ad hoc arrangement is set up. I'll give a scenario. A scenario of a football team that is built around a key player. Once that player suffers any shock and misses in action, you, you, you see that team struggling until after some, a time before they normalize around a new system or structure. So we might not say there is a total collapse of the system, but we are seeing a system where you cannot predict what is actually happening at this time. Because in the real sense, the vice president is the second citizen of this country. Ordinarily, if, for, and if this government has been uh, very um, honest to Nigerians and confirmed the actual position with the president, the president, if he's on isolation, might choose to relinquish the race of governance to his vice so that the system of governance will now revolve around him while all the whole governance structures report to him. But because this government has, for one reason or the other, kept the vice president outside the picture of, of, of what is happening, that's why you're having this sense of confusion, if I use that word. Okay, uh, Raymond, just hold on a bit. Let's uh, get Dr. Uche's perspective, because I, I, I wasn't sure what your reactions were. Let, let's hear them. Okay. To, to all his uh, comments and position on governance. Right. I had hinted to you that I do not consider myself much of a political commentator. However, yes, I have to disagree with the learned gentleman uh, for the simple reason that uh, I am unable right here, right now, to see what was working tangibly prior to the chief of staff being taken into isolation that suddenly has stopped working. That's number one. Secondly, I... I'm unable to also see um, the response efforts of the NCDC and the various states, um, you know, what has gone wrong with those response efforts because we're talking coronavirus, uh, just because Mr. Abakar is in isolation or just because the president has not personally said a word. Those things are ongoing. I am focused on those things and um, I would wonder the people who really really want to see the president is it because they love him so much and they would like to hear from him or they are concerned about his well-being or you know it's another political point since he's coming from the pdp i am not a politician but this is that is your perception fair enough okay let's take a look at the um 
banning of some media houses from covering um, events at the presidential villa in Raymond. Uh, what's yes. your take on that? Some have said it is unjustifiable. Aside from the PDP, other CMSOs have come up to say that, uh, let me see if I can find some of the comments that was uh, made, that it's designed to conceal certain facts from the public. What do you say? Okay, my take on that is um, it, it's very unfortunate. And this government has continuously shot itself in the foot. And Nigerians can every day predict their actions. Yesterday, I watched the presidential spokesman, Femi Adesino, a man whom I respect so much, give what he called a reason for winning, winning down the number of media houses covering activities at the presidential villa. You understand? But uh, you don't have to think deep to see that was, that was just a risk. And this is because when you look at the media houses that have been kept out of covering the activities of the presidency, you have the Guardian there, you have the Point newspapers, you have um, um, Vanguard, Daily Trust. These are big labels who so far have been very critical of this administration. You recall that the Point newspaper some time ago in a student editorial decided as a, as a journalistic duty to refer to this president as a retired major general. You understand? A couple of days ago, I read an, an editorial from the Guardian newspaper calling out what, he, what they described as Buhari's worrying disposition in the management of the COVID-19 in Nigeria. So when you now look at this against the backdrop of the fact that they have been asked not to be at the scene of the, pres of the presidency, then you just want to laugh. Section 22 of the Constitution guarantees the rights of the media to cover activities of government as part of their gatekeeping role in any democracy. Remember, they pride themselves as the fourth estate of the realm. So this act for me is unconstitutional, is an outright uh, desecration of our constitutionalism, and it, uh, it, is, it is very unfortunate. Doctor, let me, let's take it from another perspective and say that the advice as it stands in the wake of coronavirus is social distancing. Uh, people, too many people should not come together. Um, wouldn't that be a fair enough reason at this time for a cut down? Okay, so first let me talk about social distancing, okay? It's about understanding the spirit of social distancing. It's not about feet and inches and meters or how many people in a room. Um, if you put 50 people in a large auditorium uh, and then you put five people in a small room, those 50 people are probably safer, right? Uh, so let's understand the spirit of social distancing, why we're doing what we're doing, why people are being asked to uh, practice social distancing. Then let's come to our context. So you have uh, a press briefing or a press session usually held by the ASOROC press corps uh, and then the different media houses are allowed in to be present and relay the information. So what do I want out of that meeting? I want um, honest, unadulterated information coming out of that meeting personally. If I can get it from one, two, three different news media, uh, then it means they have nothing to hide. So it's not like they're trying to hide something, discuss something that the Nigerian people are not supposed to know about. That's number one. Then number two, is it possible that they are victimizing some news media and kicking them out because coronavirus, the COVID-19 is the hottest news item and if you don't have it, maybe you have nothing to say. That's something to be looked at. However, how big is the newsroom? How many people can uh, reasonably stay there while maintaining social, reasonable social distance at the same time. What are the criteria that they used in determining who can stay there? Because obviously it can no longer contain the same number of people. There has to be some selection, okay? So you have to find out what criteria did they use? I'm in no position to answer, but it's just, it just might be that you know somebody decided that ABC may stay. And 
in the end, we get to hear what transpired from many different sources, so there's nothing to hide. Okay, let, let me ask you more than this, and then I'll probably bring that same question right. to you. If, if uh, I might react to my, my friend in this Okay, studio. go ahead. Uh, you see, um, the fact that there is a justification for a thing or for an action taken does not suggest or does not take away the undertones or other considerations that might have led to that action. Somebody said that don't believe what government says until they have officially come up with a rebuttal. You understand? We, 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 we understand the trajectory of this administration. And the argument of social distancing with all due respect, even though I understand the spirit of the times, does not, it's ridiculous. I have been watching other heads of state, president like Donald Trump, addressing members of the press corps. And you saw the number of media houses there and photographers. The patio at the presidency where Mr. President addresses members of the press is a wide hall. We can be able to establish limits of social distancing to allow every media house to put their microphones and hear the president. The fact that you are saying that those who have been admitted would take the stories outside gives me a sense, gives me a worry that some of us do not appreciate that most times what, what happens in the, behind the scenes is not what we eventually take out. So if this administration has selectively taken out the Pons newspapers, uh, the, uh, the, the Guardian newspapers, and the other big names who have been very critical of this administration, oh, uh, it, it gives away the motives behind such an action. Okay, um, I was going to ask, because it's out there, and I would like to hear both your opinions on this. Um, there is allegation, and you, you, you did made a, make a valid point when you said if it's open and people can see what's happen, happening, the information is clear, and there is no need to worry. But there are those who are saying, considering um, uh, antecedents, that this might be the ones that are allowed those that are able to be manipulated to moderate the information in ways that suits what the government wishes exactly. to convey to the people. Okay, let's, right. let me start with you. Remember, let's start with you on right. this one. Okay, so I'm not a journalist, but uh, there are people who are correspondents, and there are journalists who, uh, who frame public opinion by expressing their views publicly like we're doing at this time. Um, I believe the people in the room are correspondents who are simply transmitting what they are seeing on live television and we can all see it. So there's nothing to manipulate. As I said, I'm not defending the government. Um, it's possible that um, the criteria that they used eventually to determine who goes and who stays may not uh, have been fair to all concerned. It's quite possible, but I, I, as I said, um, I'm in no position to um, make that determination myself. Okay. I'm, just, I'm just saying that at the point where we're in, um, and this has happened in many other countries because I follow the news uh, very closely, um, we, we notice that many people cannot be in that same room at the same time, and then they have decided that some will have to go away. I don't know how they chose who. Okay, okay. Right. Um, Raymond, I'm told we have very limited time left for this uh, segment of the program. So I'll just go ahead and ask you, um, do you think that the request by the opposition and non-governmental organizations, including uh, Huriwa, that the ban should be lifted immediately will get um, a positive response? <laughs> well, uh, Felicity, with all due respect, that question seems almost laughable, given... Uh, the government's attitude to even others of court, how much more what a group of think tanks and civil society organizations uh, issues in a communique. So as far as I'm concerned, the president would have called their bluff, and then they would send him boots down the street to enforce their, their order. And journalists will not have to put themselves, put their life in the line because they are trying to cover a government that wants to operate in opacity. All right. Thank you very much, Raymond, for your thoughts so far. You're welcome.
And doctor, thank you very much. Thank You're you. You're doing good. You're sharing your thoughts as honestly uh. as possible. All right, we'll take a short break now. And when we return, some good news um, in the war against COVID-19. Do stay with us.